Hey crafty people, it's Tasha, back with another video tutorial for Pear Blossom Press. Today I want to show you how to avoid your easy light battery getting depleted in transit. The supplies that I'll be using are some Catherine Pooler inks and I used my swatches to choose my colours based upon my inspiration piece, which I'll have detailed over on my personal blog. Twinkle lights some fabulous supplies from my favorite things along with my wow ink and white super fine embossing powder and a sentiment from simon says stamp which i'll pull in later so let's jump right in i've got my stamp set up in my misty and it is a cling rubber stamp so i have removed the mouse pad from inside my misty i'm stamping onto an a2 panel of nina solar white with my wow embossing ink. There is a lot of detail to catch in this stamp, so I really made sure that I'd got an even pressure across the whole thing using my pressure tool to help me. Then I covered it in opaque bright white in the super fine grade and heat set that fully. Then I hit pause on my camera and I was completely distracted so I forgot to hit record again for the ink blending, I'm sorry. Um, but I used the two shades of orange from one corner out, then flipped the panel and added my purples from the opposite corner. I let both colours fade into a white strip in the centre, which was partially because they're going to make a muddy brown kind of shade if they're blended together, but also because that band of white in the middle is part of my colour scheme for today. I've cut my speech bubbles from gold and I adhered them onto a piece of vellum. Then I'm just trimming round each one to remove the excess. The last element I need to prepare is my sentiment and I'm using this You Are Loved die from Simon Says Stamp. This is definitely one of my favourites. I've got some thin double-sided adhesive foam here and I'm adhering that to some Nina Solar White before cutting it with the words die and then I cut the shadow piece from some more of the same gold cardstock. I like to give my sentiments a bit of dimension and I find that the easiest way when it comes to detailed or very fine line die cuts like this is just to add the foam before die cutting then I'm not messing around with any fiddly thin strips of foam. I can just take the die cut sentiment in my reverse action tweezers and adhere it straight onto the shadow piece, not forgetting the hearts for the centre of the O's. So I've got all of the individual parts of my card, so now I can work on putting it all together. Starting with where my lights will go. There's three separate little LEDs which just twinkle beautifully and my plan is to have each one behind one of my speech bubbles. Once I'm happy with where each will sit, I'm going to die cut the three from my background panel. So I've just tacked them, tacked the dies in place with some mint tape and ran it through my Gemini Junior. I aren't wasting any of those die cuts though, I place them inside the packaging of the die set to be used on another project. I trim down my panel by roughly an eighth of an inch off each side to give me a nice border when I attach this to my card base. And it also cuts off the edges where my stamp didn't reach the whole way somehow. Now we add the lights. I'm adding a couple of strips of double-sided tape to the back of the, the panel, overhanging one of the speech bubble holes so that I can slot my gold die cut directly in there. Then flip it back over to add a couple more pieces of tape and I've secured it without any adhesive visible through the heart-shaped holes. Then I just repeated that for the other two as well. If you've never used any of the easy lights from Pear Blossom Press, allow me to show you just how easy they are to assemble. Break off one of the units, insert the battery and test them. It really is as simple as that. Now I can use some of that tape from behind my speech bubbles to hold my lights in place. I'm pressing the wires for each of them in turn into one of the strips of it and then I can seal that in with a second strip over the top, 
creating a wire sandwich <laughs> that's going to hold my lights firmly in place. Then I like to test them again at this point. I want to know that they're in just the right spot and that they're still working because at this point it's pretty easy for me to go back in and rearrange something if needs be. But the further down the line we get, the more of an issue it would become to try and go back to here and fix it. I can also test the button placement now too and I'm tacking it in place with a small piece of tape as I am going to need to get access to that again shortly. These wires can just be twisted gently and taped down. It really doesn't need to look pretty. Nobody will see or have any idea what kind of mess you're hiding back here. Now we need to build up the back so that there's enough room for the power pack. So I'm using strips of foam adhesive. This is the best ever foam tape from Pear Blossom Press. It's the perfect thickness to accommodate the power pack which is one of the reasons that it's the best ever. <laughs> if you just have regular foam tape, you're probably going to need to double up the layers to get the required depth. I'm adding this tape all over, but being careful not to cover any part of the vellum windows that my lights will shine through. And I'm also avoiding that area next to my power pack, as we'll need that clear of any obstruction for the next step. So, now we have the lights in place and we know they're working, I can show you how I would go about preparing it to be mailed without it arriving at its destination with a drained battery. We just want to create some separation between the battery and the component, but we want something that will slide out easily without risking the battery being pulled out of place too. So my favourite way to do this is using a piece of the foam tape release paper. It's kind of glossy, so it doesn't create any friction when it's pulled out, allowing it to slide straight out, but leave the battery in place. The paper needs to be sitting between the electrical board and the battery, not between the metal housing and the battery. Um, that's so that it can actually interrupt the connection. You also need to use a piece long enough to stick out enough for your recipient to grab hold properly. Then all your recipient needs to do is pull that tab to get a working light up card. I used some foam squares behind my sentiment to raise it a little more. Then I do need to mark the area with the button for my lights. So I grabbed a small star stamp and embossed it in white onto one of the gold heart die cuts that came from my speech bubbles. Then I can just glue this in place over my button. Finally, to embellish, I'm using the other golden hearts and some white clay hearts that I've got in my stash. I love how this one came out. And everything from the colour choices to the sentiment were purposefully chosen for the exact recipient that I have in mind. I really hope this card lets them know how very much I do love them and that I celebrate them this month and the other 11 too. Here are some photos of the finished card, both before and after I removed the tab. Such a simple way to solve a problem that might be stopping you from posting a light up card. But I hope this gives you the inspiration to give it a go. These lights just offer an extra level of love and fun that's always going to impress your recipient and they don't need to know how truly easy it really is. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe if you aren't already. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and my supplies are listed and linked below. Have a lovely, happy, safe and wonderful week. Stay crafty. Bye.